Hi, this is Miss Dyer, and we're going to read a book about Nelson Mandela. Roly Lala played barefooted on the grassy hills of Kunu. He fought boys with sticks and shot birds with slingshots. The smartest Madiba child of 13, he was the only one chosen for school. His new teacher would not say his Shosan name. She called him Nelson instead. Nelson was nine when his father joined the ancestors in the sky. To continue his schooling, Nelson was sent miles away to live with a powerful chief. Brace yourself, my boy. His mother held her tears and said goodbye. The chief held counsel to warriors, medicine men, farmers, and laborers. The elder ones told stories of old Africa. For centuries, Thembu, Pondo, Shosa, and Zulu peoples lived in the mountains and valleys of South Africa. The land was bountiful, fertile, and rich. The people hunted, fished, and raised crops, living in relative peace. But they made war on European settlers who came in search of land and treasure. The settlers' weapons were stronger and breathed fire. Slowly, the people were conquered. Their land was taken and spirits dimmed. South Africa belonged to Europe. The elders grew quiet, and Nelson felt sorry. Nelson grew into a young man and attended fine schools in the golden city of Johannesburg, where Africans were poor and powerless. Nelson became a lawyer and defended those who could not defend themselves. The government grew harsh and created a cruel policy. It split the people in three, African, Indian, European. It was called apartheid. The people were set apart, European-only beaches, European-only parks, European-only theaters, and the people protested. Nelson organized rallies to fight apartheid. We must win back Africa, he told them. South Africa is for all South Africans. Amandla, he shouted. Sawefu, they responded. Power to the people, and the people loved him. Speaking out was against the law, and Nelson was arrested and jailed for a fortnight with a hundred men. They danced and sang, calling the ancestors to join the fight for freedom. Amandla, Zawethu. The ancestors sent their daughter Winnie to stand next to Nelson. They found love and married and welcomed children into the world. Together they stood and fought apartheid. The state vowed to put Nelson in jail, and he went underground. He wore different disguises and lived in the shadows. Empty flats, farmhouses, and bedrooms of friends became Nelson's home, while he organized more rallies and protests. The police put out a warrant for his arrest, but they could not find him. Nelson slipped across the border to visit free nations where black Liberians, Ethiopians, and Moroccans freely conversed with white Europeans and brown Egyptians. They shook hands, a glimpse of freedom for life at home. Nelson returned to South Africa to cleanse his homeland of the hate and discrimination. With a vision for peace and beauty and harmony, Nelson felt renewed and ready to fight for freedom. But on a drive to town, he was captured, arrested, and taken to jail. The people cried, free Mandela, free Mandela. Wet paint and posters covered South African walls. On a small island off the coast of the southern tip of Africa, Nelson sat in a tiny cell. Every day, the world passed him by. Cold mealies, thin blankets, hard labor. Nelson hammered rocks into dust and read, studied, and educated fellow prisoners. Days turned into weeks, months, and years. His children grew up, relatives passed away, South Africa began to fall apart. There were more protests, more rallies, and violence. The people needed a leader. Nelson stuck a message to the people. I will return. As years passed, the world pressed South Africa to change. The new president agreed, and European-only signs came down. Beaches, parks, and theaters opened. Nelson's comrades were set free. Apartheid was no more. Nelson was an old man. After 27 and one half years, the prison gates opened and Nelson was at last set free. 
thousands surrounded him and Winnie hugged him. Nelson looked into the sky and smiled at the ancestors. Amandala, thank you. The sun sparkled in his gray and white hair. Nelson stood proudly with the wind at his back and spoke to a colorful sea of people. We must forget our terrible past and build a better future for South Africa. Let us continue to fight for justice and walk the last mile to freedom. Millions were given the vote and elected Nelson Mandela their new leader. South Africa was free at last and finally at peace. The ancestors, the people, the world celebrated. Amandla Nawethu. And then we've got some extra biographical information about Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela was born on July 18, 1918, in the Transgay region of South Africa. Nelson was the youngest son in a family of four boys and nine girls and was born with the name Roly Lala, which translates as troublemaker. However, his birth name was changed to Nelson on his first day of school. When Nelson was nine years old, his father died. To continue his schooling, Nelson was sent miles away to live with a powerful chief named Jovi Taba. During this time with the chief, Nelson began to learn about South African tribal history, politics, and diplomacy. Nelson later studied law and joined the African National Congress Youth League, a political organization to fight against the new discriminatory apartheid laws enforced by the South African government. The law segregated beaches, parks, and public institutions, making it that so white, Indian, and black Africans were not allowed to enjoy them together. Europeans only signs were posted all over South Africa, igniting widespread protests and violence. Nelson traveled the country to organize a resistance campaign to protest the new policy. This soon led to his arrest and brief imprisonment. Nelson then opened what was to be South Africa's first black law firm in August 1952 in Johannesburg with his colleague Oliver Tambo. As Nelson continued to participate in resistance campaigns with the ANC, which was soon to be declared illegal by the South African government, he was often arrested, banned, and imprisoned. In the late 1950s, as a result of his involvement with the ANC, Nelson was accused of treason and put on trial with 156 other men. It was during this trial that Nelson met and married Winnie. The trial was later dismissed, but Nelson was placed at the top of the government's most wanted list of political agitators. As a result, Nelson decided to go underground to lead the resistance campaign among, against apartheid. During this time, Nelson secretly left South Africa to visit other African and European countries to garner support for South Africa's resistance movement. However, upon his return to South Africa, Nelson was captured, convicted, and sentenced to life imprisonment for illegally leaving the country and for his involvement in the resistance movement. While Nelson sat in prison, South Africa became unstable with widespread violence and protests. South Africa, spurred by political pressure from other world nations, yearned for new leadership and ultimately declared apartheid illegal. At long last, Nelson and his comrades were released in early 1990 after having spent more than 27 years behind bars as political prisoners. Nelson was soon elected president of the ANC, and three years later, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. One year later, Nelson was inaugurated the first black president of South Africa in a landslide election. During his address to South Africa, Nelson spoke proudly. He said, We understand it is still that there is no easy road to freedom. We know it well that none of us acting alone can achieve success. We must therefore act together as a united people for national re reconciliation, for nation building, for the birth of a new world. Let there be justice for all. Let there be peace for all. Let there be work, bread, water, and salt for all. Let each know that for each the body, the mind, and the soul have been free to fulfill themselves. Never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another and suffer the indignity of being the skunk of the world. Let freedom reign. That's a little about Nelson Mandela.